Good morning, folks. I'm working on a Fender Mustang 1 amplifier this morning. Uh, that is the case, and this is the control head. As you can see, I've got it all apart. And uh, it's a nice little lamp. It's got some nice circuit cards, and for 120 bucks, it's a lot of stuff. I like the amp pretty well, but it has a pretty well understood weakness in that these uh, headphone jacks aren't very good. As a matter of fact, they're just of miserable quality. But um, there's a fix for this, and uh, first let me tell you what's wrong. When I plug in my headphone jacks, everything works fine. But when I pull the headphones, the uh, speaker should come on, and I should be able to play like a normal amp. That doesn't happen because the switched aspect of this uh, headphone jack has stopped working. And uh, the reason is that the uh, two contacts are held together by spring tension, and that has just failed to work. Well, I took the thing apart and uh, got to the back side of that and pulled the plastic cover off and resoldered, you know, heated it up in it. And, you know, it's working again, but it only worked for a little while. And like I say, that matte jack is just of miserable quality. So um, I anticipate that it won't last very long. And I wanted to post a good solution for this. And uh, first, let's go to the schematic and let me show you how this thing is, is set up so you can understand the fix. Right here is the headphone jack. And you can see there is uh, five pins on this that are in use. One, two, three, four, and five. And you'll notice that four and five are wired together. So you can consider that as just one. You can uh, use one or the other. But um, here's the switch aspect I'm talking about. Uh, when you put in your headphone jack, it hits this headphone plug, it hits this, uh, contact here and bends this and opens this up and so your signal that comes from your guitar comes to your headphone jacks and doesn't go from two to three but when you pull your headphone jack out then that should make contact and the signal sh should pass from two to three then down over here to the preamp out to a power amp and then to your speaker so what I want to do is basically replace this plug. Now, you can go on to uh, Angela's Amps website and actually buy that old that jack and replace it if you care to. But it's not going to be easy because the uh, desoldering process, it's a two-sided two board. It's going to be tedious. It's going to be a lot of trouble. And if your soldering skills aren't excellent, you're not going to get good results. And... Um, I think what I want to do is just leave this jack in place just so it doesn't uh, have an ugly gaping hole and install instead a uh, Nutric uh, stereo phone jack switched from Arch Express. It's only a buck. And uh, there's going to be a couple of challenges here. First off, let me tell you that you have three connections on this side that are shown. and what they're not showing you is on the other side, there's another three here. So this thing has a total of six, um, six connections. And let's go back to the schematic here. We had five here. They have uh, also the option to switch the, uh, the barrel, but uh, we just won't use that. So let me go back again to this switch and the challenge I see. This uh, barrel right here is, uh, I think, a maximum dimension thickness of uh, four millimeters. So it's meant to be mounted in, in metal or something like this, not tied to the back of a, of a, through the case. And if you look right here, you can see that they've uh, routed this out at kind of an angle. So it just kind of uh, comes along here and if you try to put your jack here or over here or somewhere along here up here it's going to be a mess because it's going to get you're going to have to router out that uh, case it's going to be ugly and difficult uh, you probably could install it right here and, and put your big hole right here and access it. it wouldn't be the end of the world but i think there's an easier way here's the back panel this is where the uh, power plug comes in and i'm thinking we can install this somewhere around here maybe over here keep it away over here keep it away from the power plug and uh, what I'll need to do is to get a countersinking bit and uh, cut out a hole maybe a half inch 
I don't know, a full inch here and uh, go halfway through the board. So I just have maybe a quarter or a little less thickness left and then I'll be able to put that jack through there. Now, why buy a switch jack? Well, if you don't put a switch jack in, the um, when you put your headphones on, the amplifier is still going to be playing. And this is a non-switch jack. It's real herky, probably lasts forever. Uh, that would be typical in an older amp uh, for a uh, you know your guitar cord. Well, but it doesn't have any switching, so we have to have the switching if we want it to work right. You could install this together with a switch and get the same effect, but then you got to do two things to get it right. I don't believe there would be any downside to doing that in terms of circuit failure, but um, um, well, I know there wouldn't be any problem with it. It's just that uh, it's just two more things to do, and you got this sticking out. Just don't like that. So for a buck, why not do it right? So let me show you what I did. I mentioned that I thought this jack would be really difficult to desolder, and I don't see any reason to do that. So what I did is I came in here and I identified the four terminals that we need, and I soldered some wire to it. Let me turn this over this way. Soldered some wire to it. Now the backs of these, uh, that jack has got holes as well as uh, uh, PCB pins. So you can actually get some wire through there. And that is a significant amount <laughs> less trouble than uh, trying to remove that thing. The thing you will need to do is to uh, take out this, these screws here, here and here, and there's one right there, and pull this board up and pry off that little plastic um, uh, cover on that jack and get a pair of wire cutters and just snip out the, uh, uh, I guess it's the sleeve, yeah, the, the sleeve uh, pin so that the switching doesn't work anymore because if your switching is still working, then you're going to have some problem getting the uh, speaker to shut off when you plug into your other because you'll have two two switches in parallel. Let me show you what I'm talking about here with this tip barrel and sleeve. Uh, the end of the jack is called the tip, the middle is the sleeve, and the end is the barrel. Uh, the barrel is the common, and the tip and sleeve is right and left channel. We don't much care about that. It just so happens that the sleeve is where the uh, guitar channel goes through. And uh, this is the way it's laid out on the board. Right here. The switch sleeves are S2 and S3. Uh, B is B1 for the barrel, and uh, the tip is the orange wire. It's four and five. Those correspond to the uh, numbers that I showed you on the drawing early. So all you have to do now is to get the drawing for the uh, Nutric and match the wire colors to one, two, three, and four. And uh, for me, with my color choices that happens to be green blue yellow and orange and um, that's just about all there is to it folks uh, I believe that will be all you need to get the job done uh, thanks for watching